Yeah, this is riveting. And, and I, I would say you could absolutely make a case this is the best Kate Blanchett performance to date. Hey, everybody. It's uh, the latest from Todd Field, uh, starring Kate Blanchett, Tar. But first, have you subscribed yet? <laughs> have you? Maybe you should. You might enjoy it here at Breakfast All Day. It's fall movie season, so we got Tar and Triangle of Sadness and Decision to Leave and Banshees of Inisherin, and all the good stuff is coming. So stick with us. If you've not hit the button yet, we'd love to see you. Um, yes, Kate Blanchett is Tar, and this is just a tremendous performance. Like maybe the best ever from Kate Blanchett, and that is saying something. You want to dance the mask? You must service the composer. You've got to supplement yourself, your ego, and yes, your identity. She plays this, like, prolific maestro, Lydia Tarr, incredibly accomplished and acclaimed. She's at the absolute height of her acclaim and her abilities at the beginning of this film. She's an EGOT. yes. Which, like, is an impressive thing to be for anybody, but for somebody who was, you know, an orchestra conductor, it seems especially rare. She's doing one of those New Yorker conversations where Adam Gopnik tells you, and that's one of the most elegant exposition dumps I've ever seen in a movie, by the way. Oh, His right. introduction oh. to her. Oh, it's, it's riveting. And, like, each new thing, each new accolade is like, come on, really? <laughs> She's all these things. But she is. Um, and so we see her as she goes about preparing to do Mahler's Fifth Symphony. She has conducted all the other ones, but like the fifth is apparently incredibly complicated. And so she's preparing to do that. But a series of things is threatening to topple her and her just incredibly impenetrable sense of self. Like she is a total megalomaniac and a total control freak, but also can be charming as hell and warm and seem to offer her mentorship to people. And she's just so incredibly good at what she does and has been a prodigy for so long that it's impossible not to want to be around that level of extreme greatness. And so we watch as she tries to navigate a series of scandals and also a series of internal struggles she is having. Like she's one thing she's famous for is having an incredible ear, but that haunts her as the film goes on. It begins life as this very sharp fighting satire of the formality and the um, conceitedness of the <laughs> fine arts world, right? right? How elitist it is. But it slowly but surely becomes like a gothic horror film in terms of its <laughs> sound design, in terms of the use of lighting. And Kate Blanchett, the whole way, like watching her struggle to keep it all together, like maintain that facade while everything is crumbling around her is a totally fascinating um, sense of tension. Um, great supporting cast, including no Noemi Merlant as yes. her longtime, very loyal, but Long increasingly <laughs> frustrated assistant who is supposed to be next in line to be the assistant orchestra conductor. Yeah, just watching her manipulate and gaslight everyone around her so shrewdly and so brilliantly is like darkly hilarious and terrifying at once. She has to speak perfect German in this film and play the piano. There's a whole long single take where she like teaches this class at Juilliard that's just <laughs> mesmerizing in like the peaks and the valleys and the places she goes with it. And it's just an incredible f piece of filmmaking here. Yeah, it, it's a it's it's an extraordinary sort of portrait of arrogance, but uh, also of accomplishment. I've seen it described as a post post me too movie, which I thought was an interesting uh, observation. Just in terms of the more established you get, the more that maybe you can get away with until you can't, you know. And and that's a thing that we sort of see kind of. Uh, a lot of examples in the world right now of people whose sort of well-constructed barriers of achievement and of power and of reputation and famous friends, you know, where does that then end? And suddenly you have to kind of face up to things that have happened. Um, yeah, I, I think that you're right. This this movie does kind of take a turn into horror movie territory in a way, but never in a sort of luridly obvious no. way, just very, very subtly and very much in the way that it's constructed, the way the lighting shifts, the way the, the sound design changes. Um, yeah, this is riveting. And, and I, I would say you could absolutely make a case this is the best 
Kate Blanchett performance to date. And, and that's no small feat, but I think what she is called upon to do here and the, the granular level of this performance, the little details about this character that kind of add up to all the things that you learn and, 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 and discover about her. Uh, but then, yeah, she's surrounded by the likes of like, you know, Nina Haas as her, as her, you know, long suffering wife. I think she's really great in this. Uh, the woman who plays the sort of, um, the cello virtuoso who's mm -hmm. kind of potentially going to be her latest protege. Sophie really great. Cower. So, yes. And she, uh, she's this Russian cellist in the film, and she actually is a musician, but has to like oh, wow. hold her own opposite Kate Blanchett in all these scenes and does an incredible job. Wow. I, I believed her as a musician. I didn't know that she was not previously an actress, but yeah, she's dynamite in this. Uh, yeah. So this is, I think this is the kind of movie that will benefit from repeated viewings mm -hmm. because once you know everything you know at the end of this and you want to go back and sort of watch how it all unfolds and what do we learn when and, and just so much, there's so much detail to take in here in terms of the performance, in terms of how the music is presented and discussed in a very kind of heady way. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I definitely look forward to seeing this again. The script is so complicated. It yes. really, it's so rich in detail as far as this absolute high level of like knowledge of specific composers, how classical music works. I did not get a lot of it because I am not in any way an expert on that kind of stuff. I'm sure people who are like serious music aficionados will get a lot of this and appreciate sure. the work that Todd Field put into the script to get all that stuff right. Because it's the kind of thing that like if you got it wrong, you would get called on it because people who <laughs> exactly. care about this stuff care really, really deeply. And he gets – as you, granular is a good word for it. Granular is the, the word to use to describe the level of detail in the script, in this world, to make it all seem authentic. And yet there's also a, a big picture relatability to the arc that she undergoes. And the, when you find out what happens in the end, it makes her character – seem more human and seem more understandable. This is not a spoiler. Yeah. I have long felt like all of us, you, me, everybody, like we are all still the 12 year old versions of ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. All the insecurities that drove us, all the ambitions that motivated us from that, that pivotal time in our lives, mm -hmm. they are still there driving us to this day, no matter who you are, how far you go, what accomplishments you achieve, like that thing is still in you. And I feel like that is still in her. And that's why she goes out of her way to show how incredibly knowledgeable she is and how she'll command True. a room and tell <laughs> these long stories, long name droppy stories. And, and it's all a desire to be adored, be taken seriously. Um, the fact that she was a prodigy from a very young age probably fucked her up in terms of her sense of self and having yeah. to like over compensate in other areas. You come to see the self she has created for yes. herself, you know? Yeah. I love how the, the, the detachment of tone here, like the performance is passionate. The music mm. is incredible, but Todd Field does not judge her. And as you mentioned, like it's a me too movie, but from the perpetrator's perspective yeah. and he does not, He's not condemning her. He's just like showing this incredibly complicated, flawed woman and letting us decide for ourselves. It's like the same kind of cool detachment that exists in her like chicly, brutalist bunker of an apartment <laughs> exists everywhere in this film right. and just like lets the drama, let the performance and the art of it speak for itself. Yeah. I, look, I'm with you. A lot of the classical music talk went right over my head, but mm -hmm. it was it's sort of like when... Dan Aykroyd slips into jargon, scientific jargon in, in Ghostbusters. I'm just like, okay, this is the, this is the air we're breathing now and fine movie. You just say things and I'll, I'll right. nod and pretend like I know what's going on. I believe you. <laughs> yes. So I'm saying 9.8. This is one of the absolute wow. best movies of the year. There's a tiny, teeny little thing at the end that I don't love. But other than that, it's pretty much perfect. I say eight, and that's from one viewing. So okay. uh, it's quite possible that, like, with subsequent viewings, I will love it even more. Uh, I, I think there are, uh, there are some, like, a few – I could pick at some things if I wanted to. But uh, it's absolutely uh, a, a, a powerful film and one that uh, I will be thinking about a lot.